father. Mm -hmm. Do justice to the afflicted and need. So he says, how long will you judge unjustly? Now he's talking to the God here. He said, what you should do, he said, defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Go ahead. Deliver the poor and needy. Go ahead. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. You know what you should do? You should do what I do. Is this not what God does? Is he not a defender of the poor and the fatherless? Is he not just? Is he not a deliverer? He said, rid them out of the hand of the wicked. Verse 5, what about this man? They know not, uh -huh. neither will they understand. They know not. You were made in the image and the likeness of God, an omniscient God, one that knows and when you, if you take hold of his word, you will know. When man rejects his word, so they don't know. So this earth is full of darkness because they have rejected the light of God. They say they know not, neither will they understand. What about their walk? They walk on in dark. Uh -huh. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Everything's out of course. Everything is gone astray. Everything is crooked. The whole world is a hustle. But verse 6. I have said ye are God. I have said ye are gods and what? And all of ye are children of the Most High. So what were we made to become? I said ye are gods and all of you are the children of the Most High. When you really think about your potential, it should bring into question the actions of man. Everybody's action, your action, my action. If we were made to be gods, how is it that we act and behave in the way in which we do? That's the question here. I have said ye are gods and all of you are the children of the most high God. And because as this creation of God, you refuse to be what God made you to be. Be like him which is righteous, which is just. What's going to happen to you? Verse 7. But you shall die like men uh -huh. and fall like one of the princes. You're going to die in your sin. But you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Let's go to John 10. Is because to say that you are to become God is almost, it would seem some might say this is blasphemy. This is blasphemy. Let's see here what the, what the master say. This is John 10, and we're going to pick it up at verse 30. The gospel according to John chapter 10 and verse 30. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. He was a light unto the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. When you ready, go ahead. I and my father are one. He says, I and my father are one. He was the Messiah, or the Mashiach, that was to come into the world. I and my father are one. He is the one that was there in the very beginning. John, we also see John writes, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Hebrews, in the book of Colossians, we can read that he created the world. So it said, I and my Father are one. They are on one accord. And man, even from the beginning, when you read in Romans, one knew about that Godhead. So that they are without excuse. So I say, I and my father are one. What did these unbelieving Jews do? Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. So these Judeans, he came unto his own. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. See, this world as a whole never loved Christ. They didn't love him then when he walked the earth, and they certainly don't love him now. So it said, then the Jews took up stones again. So this wasn't the first time. They took up stones again to stone him. And what did Jesus answer them? Jesus answered them, many good works have I showed you from my father. Mm -hmm. but which of those works do ye stone me? He was righteous. He was a lamb without blemish and without spot. That's why John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God was taken away the sin of the world. This is why Pilate, when he tested him, said, I find no fault in him. It said, many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do ye stone me? And what, were they, what was their response? Verse 33. The Jews answered him, saying, uh -huh. For a good work we stone thee not. For a good work we stone thee not. Go ahead. But for blasphemy. Uh -huh. Because thou, being a man, makest thyself God. He said, but you being a man, 
Makest thyself God. And he was Emmanuel, or God in the flesh. But what did he say? Jesus answered him. Uh-huh. Is it not written in your law? Is it not written in your law, in your instruction? Go ahead. I said ye are God. I said ye are gods. He tells them their foolishness, verse 35. If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came. If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came. We read about that, but go ahead. And the scripture cannot be broken. And the scripture cannot be broken. Go ahead. Say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified, mm -hmm. and said unto the world, Thou blasphemous, because I said I am the Son of God? He said, wait a minute. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him who the Father actually set apart and sent into the world, you blasphemy because I said I am the Son of God? Don't you understand? Ye are gods? Let's go to Genesis 1 and see what this one, when you really understand, he's the one that did this here. This is Genesis 1. What was made in the very beginning? Genesis 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 26. Genesis 1 and verse 26. When you're ready, go ahead. And God said, uh -huh. let us make man in our image go ahead. after our likeness. Mm -hmm. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, go ahead. over the cattle, and over all the earth, uh -huh. and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Go ahead. So God created man in his own image, uh -huh. and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So it says this word God, God is not his name. It said, and God said, when you read it here, that's Elohim. We know that's plural and tensile. That could be that could be more than one. It's like the word family. You could have two or two thousand in one family. So here, and they are one. This is the Father and the Son dealing here. And God said, Let us make man in our image. Who is the us? He making in his image. There's only two, the Father and the Son. You know he's not talking to the angels because we don't have wings. We don't have cast feet. We don't have four faces. And God said, let us make man in our image. After what? Our like. After our likeness. Made in the image and the likeness of God. Think about what you become. And let them have dominion. Give them dominion. Give them rule. Give them power. And God did it. We know we know perhaps it was a father that made the, made this uh, proclamation and we know that the son indeed did it. So God created man in his own image. We know specifically it was Jesus. We know that no man has seen the father at any time. We know that, we know that he, Jesus created the world. We know that when Jesus spoke unto the Jews, he said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He said, thou art not yet... 50 years old, hast thou seen Abraham? He said, before Abraham was, I am. Then they picked up stones to stone him. So God created man in his own image, took the dust of the earth. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils, and man became a living soul. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. He created this man in his own very image. We should ask the question, what should happen, or what would have happened had not sin come into the world? Had not death come into the world? We're going to find out. But verse 28. And God blessed him. Uh -huh. God said unto them, Go ahead. Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it. Uh -huh. and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moved upon the earth. So he, he blessed this man and said, God, God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. Every seed, everything had a seed within itself. Bring forth other men, other women, to all, and bring forth, we will find out a godly seed. Ultimately, that's what marriage is all about. But he blessed them and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. But Genesis 2, let's pick it up in Genesis 2 and verse 7. Because if he, he didn't mention being or dying there. So how is it that we die if we were made to become God? How is that the thesis here if we are to become God? How, how, how are we dying? Well, let's find out. 
Genesis 2 and verse 7. When you're ready, go ahead. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, mm -hmm. and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So we were created. Atheists have a, have a problem here. You have to explain your own existence. How do you explain it? How do you explain this creation? So you have to come up with some pseudoscience. But it says, the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Notice he didn't put a soul inside of man. Man became a living soul, and when you die, you a dead soul. Let's skip down to verse 15. When you're ready, go ahead. And the Lord God took the man, mm -hmm. and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. So he prepares a table for this man. He gives him everything that he would need. And then what does he give him? He gives him instruction. Go ahead. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Go ahead. Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Of every physical tree thou mayest freely eat. Go ahead. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But there's another tree. He said, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Go ahead. Thou shalt not eat of it. Don't eat of it. Go ahead. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, what's going to happen? Thou shalt surely die. He said, don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And we should know that this is figurative. We should know that he's talking about a specific spiritual being, none other than Satan, that old serpent called the devil. Don't commune with him. See, man had a choice. Man had a choice. And some might ask the question, why give man a choice when you know he just going to mess up in the first place? Understand, in the creation of man, God was not creating robots. Man creates robots. God was not creating robots. He gave you free will because it is only through free will that you can actually love. If you don't have free will, you cannot love. You cannot be, a, for example, a man cannot go up to a woman and say, you're going to marry me and you're going to love me. And you're going to force her to do it. No, she has to choose to love you. You might force her there. You might bound. You might do any, any and everything to keep her next to you, but she might hate your guts. You have to have that love there. And that's why you have free will. But it said, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. He gave you an option. But he gave you also directive on what to do. And he gives you, he prepares a table, gives you instruction, and then gives you consequences. This is a fundamental, elementary uh, principle in the Bible. Life, you want life? You want blessings? Be obedient. You want cursings? You want death? Be disobedient. That's fundamental in the scriptures. But let's go to Genesis 3. Because again, how is it that we die? We were made to become God. Genesis 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 8. Because here, this man and this woman went astray, disobeyed God, and ate of that fruit of lies from none other than that old serpent called the devil. And what happens here? Because he's going to interrogate him, Adam, verse 8. And he heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Go ahead. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Now that's ignorant. We were talking about the attributes of God, how he's omnipotent and omniscient. You can't hide from God. But they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. What happened? Verse 9. And the Lord God called unto Adam mm -hmm. and said unto him, where art thou? Mm -hmm. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid Why? because I was naked and I hid myself. And what happened? What did the Lord ask him? And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Who told thee that thou was naked? See, he got some information. Fool for thought. Who told thee that thou was naked? That's what? Has thou eaten of the tree? Go ahead. Whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat. Did you break my commandment? Let's skip down to verse 17. Because he did it, he tried to blame the woman. But understand, the man is the head. He's the spiritual head. That's just like when you think of Job, who was a perfect man, one who was upright, who feared God and eschewed evil, when his wife came unto him and said, Dost thou still retain thy integrity? Curse God and die. He said, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speak. So when she came with that fruit, he should have told Eve, You are the pocket. 
But let's skip down to verse uh, 17 and read. When you're ready, go ahead. And then to Adam he said, uh -huh. Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Because you listen to your wife. So he's meeting out judgment here. He judges this serpent. He said, hey, listen. You're going to be cursed above all cattle. He gives him his position. You're going to eat dust all the days of thy life. Your head shall be bruised when it's all said and done. To this woman, he says, and it says, uh, great, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. And sorrow shalt thou bring forth children. And to this man, he says, and unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened to the voice of thy wife, and hast done what? And hast eaten of the tree, uh -huh. of which I commanded thee, saying, Go ahead. Thou shalt not eat her. Because uh -huh. he wasn't deceived, but she was deceived, but he went along with it. So now, you got judgment on the table. Go ahead. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Uh huh. And sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. So you gonna struggle to eat. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. You gonna have to eat. You have to work to eat. It said, and sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. And when you look at our lives, when you look at what we have to do as a species just to survive, it's a struggle. Thirty years on the job. That's a struggle. Dealing with this man, as they say, that's a struggle. Bills, 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 that's a struggle. But go ahead, verse 18. Thorns also and thistles shall be bring forth to thee, uh -huh. and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. So thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, so it's not going to yield what it should yield, or it would have yield. It says, in the sweat of thy face shall what? Thou shalt eat bread. You're going to eat bread in the sweat of thy face. Go ahead. Till thou return unto the ground. Until you return unto your home. That's the home going. You going back into the dust. That's why he, he fashioned you in his image, but he fashioned you with dust. It says, till thou return unto the ground. For what? For out of it is thou taken. For out of the ground was thou taken. Go ahead. For dust thou art, and to dust shalt thou return. So that's how death came on the scene.